All right, guys, what's up? The last couple of videos focused on the different hands and when to play them. Aces are good, a flush beats a straight, and the player who's dealt the best cards always wins, right? Thankfully, no. It's time we talk about the art of bluffing. All right, so the perfect hand doesn't come around too often in Texas Hold'em. This means you can't just fold every bad hand and play aggressively once you get a great hand. That's too easy to read. Great players know how to earn chips even with weak cards by tricking other players into thinking they have a great hand. Bluffing is usually divided into two different kinds of bluffing, a pure bluff and a semi-bluff. A pure bluff is when you play a terrible hand aggressively, such as 7-2 offsuit. That's probably not going to lead anywhere. So you try to make your opponents think you have a great hand so they'll fold their own cards. Doing a pure bluff is of course extremely risky, but getting a quick win from terrible cards will help you a lot and keep your opponents guessing. A semi-bluff is when you bluff with cards that aren't great but could turn into something, like 8-9 suited. This isn't a great hand, but since it's suited connectors, you have a decent chance of hitting a flush or a straight from the community cards. Now, when to bluff depends on a few factors. First up though, this video is brought to you by us, the Easy Poker app. The easiest way to play poker with friends, whether you're physically together or playing online from separate locations. No chips or playing cards needed. Get started now. It's completely free and you'll find a link down below. All right, so the ideal timing for a bluff depends on three factors. First of all, it's wise to limit your bluffing to when you're up against one or two players. It's easier to fool a couple of players than a whole table. And if you're playing against a whole group, the risk of one of them having a great hand is high. Secondly, you wanna bluff at times when your opponent seems weak. Players who are low on chips or who just try calling a hand instead of betting might not have the confidence to call your bluff. Lastly, you should always keep your opponent's playing style in mind when deciding to bluff. Bluffing against a player with a tight playing style is probably more secure than against a loose cannon who might call you. Now, when you do decide to bluff, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. You need to make sure that you play as though you had the hand you're pretending to have. Keep the community cards in mind and act accordingly. This is called representing a hand. Like in this case, where we represent hitting a flush on the river. If you bet pre-flop, you should keep betting after the flop whether the community cards have given you anything or not. This is called a continuation bet, or C-bet. And without it, your opponent will easily spot that your initial bet was just a bluff. And remember, if you're bluffing, the last thing you want is to end up in a showdown with your weak hand. Finish the job before that and get your opponent to fold. So there you go. Now you know when and how to bluff. To practice these bluffing strategies with your friends, consider downloading the free Easy Poker app. It feels completely like a physical poker set. And remember, this is a series. So in the next video, we're going to look at betting, what to do when you actually do get a great hand, and how do you make the most of it? I'll tell you.